Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Armin Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium for this matchup of Big Three Varsity Girls Soccer, your Brockton High Lady Boxers taking on the Lady Whalers of New Bedford High School. Last Big Three matchup for each team, and a very important one, as this uh, outcome will likely decide the fate of the Big Three Championship. If Brockton were to capture this victory tonight, likely they would go on to win it uh, New Bedford would have a slightly more uphill challenge uh, given their record, but they would likely be crowned the big three victor if they were to win as well. So a very important game here this evening uh, for both teams as the boxers come in at 6-4-4, four, and 1-0-2 four, oh, in big three play, and New Bedford comes in at 4-5-5 five, and five, with a record of 1-0-1 one, one in big three play. Your starting lineups for the visiting New Bedford, Whalers, Amy Reese in goal, Taylor Soares, Jillian Amora, Alexis Ferreira, Megan Medeiros, Isandra Andrade, Alicia DeMello, Cassie White, Jacinda McCartney, Alexia Pacheco, and Ariana Bedoya rounding out the 11 for the Lady Whalers. And for your Brockton High Lady Boxers, Tori Viola in the goal, Ariana Almeida, Elizabeth Buckley, Narita Montrand, Amanda Almeida, Lara Andretti, Tiana Brooks, Maria Del Pico, the Wonder Woman herself, Jen Caruso, Ari Sylvia, and the newly added to the team, starting in place of Megan Mulholland, is Megan Anderson, the sophomore midfielder forward uh, for the Brockton Boxers as both teams take the field. New Bedford Lady Whalers huddling it up, getting each other ready, and Narita Mantra and Jen Caruso doing a little friendly dance around, little little handshake routine. Defensemen go back to meet keeper Tori Viola as this one's about to get underway. Skeleton crew here this evening. Me and my man Patrick hanging out in the booth. Doing our best to bring you this action on BCA Sports. On a soggy but decidedly much nicer than it was Tuesday evening. Sparse crowd here at Marciano Stadium ready to see this big three battle. Our referees for the evening. On the near side of the field is Mike Kelly. On the far side of the field is Randy Ellis. I'm told that uh, the Boston Globe is perhaps sending a representative down here for this game this evening, perhaps to do a story on the Wonder Woman Caruso as they are underway, and the aforementioned Caruso has the ball. A little congestion in the middle of the field. Montrand unable to get it. Brockton back on defense as Cassie White controls. Looking on the far side there for Megan Medeiros. It's not to be. Throw in here. Sylvia looking for it, but apparently it bounced on the end line. Tough throw in there on the far side for Amanda Almeida. She's usually a very strong in that category, and to see her mess one up that early, not exactly a good sign for the Lady Boxers, but I'm sure she'll be able to figure it out. Free kick up to the middle of the field. Deflected to the near side, running towards it is Cassie White. White boots it up after some defensive pressure there from Lara Andretti corralled by the freshman keeper, Tori Viola. Very wet this evening. Uh, we'll see soon whether or not the field has dried out any. The rain did hold off later on in the afternoon. So Viola's kick goes to midfield. Ari Sylvia is trying to play it along the far side and unable to do so. Randy Ellis points the other way. It'll be a Lady Whaler throw in. Talked to Coach Nick Adams before the game. He said this is an extremely important test for the rest of the season for his Lady Whalers. They want to win this game and finish strong in the big three and continue that momentum down the stretch of the season as we head towards the playoffs in just a few weeks' time here. It's a throw in on the far sidelines for the Lady Whalers. And we, in pregame warm-ups, we saw Tori Viola go down kind of awkwardly, though showing no signs of that spill thus far. Definitely something to keep an eye on, especially with the wet conditions. Nice move on the far sidelines by Ari Sylvia. Jen Caruso running with the defense. She's got three Lady Whalers screaming back at her. Good stop and go move. Looking to the middle of the field. Megan Anderson sees it goes by. Del Pico on the near sidelines. And she blasts an errant shot from the near sidelines. It went up behind the goal. Good aggressiveness early by the boxers, as that's something they try to do very often, get Jen Caruso space down the near or far side, really up the hash marks if we're looking at the football field. Uh, 
able to connect there, but Caruso's pass uh, you know, unable to be capitalized on by Maria Del Pico. Sophomore midfielder for the Lady Boxers. Good play there up by Tiana Brooks. Del Pico Corrals played on up by Alicia DeMello, the Lady Whalers. Marie Sylvia controls. Del Pico gives it up there defensively. Alexis Ferrara. Sylvia back in control. You can hear the Lady Boxers talking to each other very frequently. Caruso, good job staying on sides. Montron found her. She's got a step here. And beautiful shot inside the out. Inside the far post. And that was a beautiful shot there from Jen Caruso. Her 22nd goal of the season. Good for 29 points on this late season as she is scorching towards 30. She's got over 100 in her career. And hopefully the, the Boston Globe was in here early to see that one as Jen Caruso takes it down the field in the third minute of the game. Puts it past the keeper, Amy Race, and really nothing she could do. Once you give Caruso time and space like that and an opportunity to make a good shot, boy, she is just unstoppable and shows it once again as she scores her 22nd goal of the season to go along with seven assists. And that was a beautiful, beautiful start for the Brockton Lady Boxers, and they look poised to continue on that. If you're New Bedford, you got to come back and get a quick score right now. Ball inbounded, Alexia Pacheco. And they move up the field. Referee Mike Kelly signaling a Lady Whaler throw, in. and to do so will be Jacinda McCartney. And she turns, gets the ball into Alexia Pacheco. And booted back out of bounds by Elizabeth Buckley. Tiana Brooks there defensively as well. Boy, good play. Laura Andretti, good strong play on defense. And Megan Anderson attempted to play the ball here down the near sidelines. And Jacinda McCartney will throw it back in. Letting it roll out of bounds there. Laura Andretti looking for Anderson. Unable to corral. Jacinda McCartney there for the Lady Whalers. Ball goes to the far sidelines. Peyton Calvao, and in early, as an early substitution here for the Lady Whalers, Calvao is in the game, chasing the bar down, ball down the far sidelines, Jillian Amaram. Correction, that was Megan Medeiros, senior midfielder and forward for New Bedford High School. Throw in on the far sidelines, deflected by Medeiros. Played out by Tiana Brooks. Yeah, another throw in on the far sidelines. Just about as close to the corner as you could be without a, without a corner kick being called. Brooks there defensively. Turning away from her and watching the ball go out of bounds was Cassie White. Good pace to this game so far, though. New Bedford hasn't been able to put a score on the board. Nice play there by Ari Sylvia along the far sideline. She's got room, and she's got Anderson and Caruso both streaking. Just a matter of time, and Ari Sylvia just pushes that a bit too far out of the reach of Caruso. Boy, Megan Anderson is looking good here. The sophomore midfielder and forward combination just inserted into the lineup for Brockton and already making some plays happen with her, with her quick speed, and she will be quite a weapon alongside Jen Caruso for the rest of the season, or so it appears. And on the far sidelines, Caruso looking for it, unable to do anything with it, really. And it will be a... Goal kick. There to take it is Cassie White for the Lady Whalers. Boots it up as it hits a number of Lady Boxers. Kicked around. Del Pico control. She was looking for not Mantra in the middle of the field. As it was played back, Megan Anderson trying to make another run in behind the keeper. And the ball is played safely back to the Whalers goalkeeper. Ari Sylvia on the far sidelines. And with two defenders on her now, looks back to Amanda Almeida. Lady Boxers defense deflected off the Whalers out of bounds. Brockton throwing is in. Narita Montron and others there defensively. And boy, good ball down the near side here, but better defense by Brockton, at least for the moment. Lara Andretti about able to get the ball out on the near side. It's Cassie White 
will inbound the ball again for the Whalers. Good support from behind by Tiana Brooks on the near sidelines. So she's able to come in. As the throw in went over the head of Lara Andrade. Tiana Brooks there to boot it out. And she's there again as Cassie White battling for the Whalers. Inadvertent handball, but good, uh, good no call there by Mike Kelly. As, as long as it's deemed that there is no intent, there won't be a call but an inadvertent handball. Lady Whalers implying a bit of a different strategy here than we've seen before as the ball's kicked over to the far sidelines looking for Megan Medeiros. Uh, throwing the ball in short on those uh, sideline throw-ins on the near side by the goal line extended. Usually you see other teams get a bit more loft on that ball and try and make something happen in the middle of the field right in front of the keeper. Obviously, New Bedford thinks that their chances will come better from the outside and that's where they're, where they're coming from. Ari Sylvia battling down the far sidelines, unable to keep it in bounds. Alicia DeMello will restart play for the Lady Whalers. Gotten up the field there, waiting for it. Ariana Bedoya with Montrand on her. Both sidelines very relaxed thus far, and especially New Bedford. You would think that given the events of the first three minutes in which Jen Caruso was able to score, make this game one nothing, that at the 31 minute mark, you'd see a little emotion out of the Whalers team. Well, give them credit for not showing any signs of, uh, of frantic or panic behavior, but you gotta think that this is a big game for them, especially given that they are already down a game in the loss column and two games currently in the win column to Brockton in terms of overall record. And Brockton obviously needing another win and they will clearly win the big three championships, something that has been very important uh, to the entire team and including Coach Admir De Silva. He has spoken about it many times with us this year. He's looking to build, continue to build on a strong program and, and one way to start doing that, especially when you have you know, a few young players on the team is to give them a taste of, uh, of some championship soccer and see how they react. So here in the inbound, Lady Whalers looking dangerous. Good job to clear by Del Pico and finds Megan Anderson wide open, but her turn was just a bit too wide and it's gotten back in. New Bedford clearly packing the box now, really trying to set up another chance and, and defend against a Lady Whalers team that has seemed to be more aggressive here in the last minute or two. So we have rolled under the 30 minute mark. 29-30 remaining in this first half. Box is up 1-0 on a beautiful low kick by Jen Caruso. 22nd goal of the season. Ari Sylvia around midfield battling there with Ariana Bedoya. Good battle on the on the ball and some, some physical play coming into this game as we have seen much this year. Brockton a very physical team and most teams that come into this building choose to challenge them, some wisely, some not so wisely. And we've seen New Bedford make a commitment to that as Cassie White with a beautiful move got right by Buckley. Cassie White, decent change of speed, but on a quick defender like Buckley, a stop and go move, not exactly the best choice of maneuver as Buckley was able to get the ball back. Ariana Almeida will kick it up in front of freshman keeper Tori Viola. Temperature dropping just a bit here this evening. My man Patrick's got a nice jacket on with the sweatshirt combination. I am not as cold, but you know, to each their own. Decent ball up the middle there. Pretty short free kick there, or goal kick rather, from Brockton. And that's something that they've struggled with all season. We've seen Admir De Silva change kick takers between Tori Viola and uh, Tiana Brooks and Liz Buckley, really just trying to find the best combination of strength and, uh, and trajectory as Caruso got, has a run up the middle of the field here. And boy, what looked like she was going to get right by Jillian Amorim, and Amorim really got lucky there and kind of able to trip Caruso up. Her foot kicks the ball inadvertently down to Amy Reese, goalkeeper. Another scary moment there for the for the Lady Whalers as Jen Caruso is nearly on the loose again. Good D there by Ari Sylvia, finds Montrand. And good job to head off the ball, Peyton Calvao. 
Again, the early sub. And maybe perhaps Nick Adams, coach of the New Bedford Whalers, saw something that he didn't like and made the transition to Calvao. She has the ball back out again. There for the boxers is Amanda Almeida. No movement on the Brockton sidelines. And we have a sub waiting at half field for the Whalers as number 10, Zonda Andrade is going to come back into the game. She was a sub that was taken out. Perhaps she needed to stretch or something like that. She appears to be all right nonetheless. Throwing on the near side for Brockton. Montron controls, looking for an outlet. It's Ariana Almeida looking for Caruso, trying to split it in the middle. And again, really just a lucky break there for Amorim as she's able to clear it away from Caruso. It's bearing down on her once again. Far side for New Bedford. Ari Sylvia intercepts to the middle where she has Montron. Del Pico running up into the play. Good job to kick it away for New Bedford. And decent job again for the boxers to save it. And they've kept the majority of the action here through 13 minutes and change in, in New Bedford's defensive half. And that's got to be a scary proposition already being down one nothing. if you're the Lady Whalers. It's looking for... Megan Anderson was Ariana Almeida, but unable to find her. Mike Kelly signals a throw in for the Lady Boxers on the near sidelines. Intercepting there was Alexis Ferrara. Looking for Caruso there, and she gets tripped up inadvertently. And no call there as Caruso was sort of lobbing for, and now Anderson's got it on the near sidelines. Could cut back to the middle looking for Caruso, waiting anxiously in the middle of the field, and good shot on the run for Megan Anderson. Amy Reese saw that one all the way and was able to stop it, but good pressure for the newly added Megan Anderson. She's really made her presence felt here very early for the Lady Boxers, and that is a good sign for Coach Admir De Silva and his Brockton squad. So out of bounds in front of the Whalers bench. Jacinda McCartney, fully inbound. And back into the game here is Zandra Andrade. She was the one who controlled the throw in. Ari Sylvia battling there for Brockton. Megan Anderson looking outside for Jen Caruso. And actually, Amanda Almeida had a better chance at it from the defensive position, but I believe it was a good decision on her part not to go after that ball and leave the backside exposed. Caruso controls far side of the field, looking towards the middle for Montron. Montron headed off at the pass by Jacinda McCartney. Good defensive play there, looking back for Caruso. Strong leg on it, two Whaler defenders there, and they'll break back the other way as Del Pico and Andrade close in for Brockton. Tiana Brooks, good effort there. The Andrade for New Bedford now down the near sidelines. Buckley waiting there, and Andrade gets it kicked off for Tori Viola rushing out. Dangerous slide there and a really aggressive play and probably a smart one by Tori Viola, but if Andrade had been able to get that ball over to the middle, she, she would have found a teammate with a wide open net. Really boomer bust play there for Viola now kind of hopping around on that leg. Not sure if it's the same one that she may have injured or tweaked a little bit in pregame warm-ups. But anyways, that will be something to keep an eye on. Ball in, and good header there by Ari Sylvia, the defensive midfield and forward stalwart for the Brockton Lady Boxers. Good push here by New Bedford, right around the 23-and-a-half minute mark remaining in the first half. Getting a couple chances down there. Nothing really too dangerous goalkeeper Tori Viola, though she did have to come way out of her crease and make, make a sliding play outside the box. But overall, pretty clean half here for Brockton and good offensive pushes and clearly up 1-0 on the scoreboard at the 23-minute mark. Caruso's goal about three minutes in. Unleveled the game in Brockton's favor. And good defensive effort there by the Lady Whalers. Sorry, Sylvia tried to keep it in and getting it out of bounds. The newly into the game sub for the Whalers, Alana Garcia. Alana Gracia, excuse me. 
Jen Caruso, good aggressive play down the far sidelines. Has Anderson cutting to the middle of the field and Caruso with a bending shot that will deflect off of Alana Gracia and it will be a corner for the Brockton Boxers. Sylvia is shaking out her left, left hand a little bit. Captain Ari Sylvia for Brockton. In the middle of the field here as Caruso looks. Looks to get it into the middle. And really getting a good head on it was Ariana Almeida, but unable to actually do anything with it. Uh, as uh, there appears to be a photographer or something on the far sidelines. This actually looks like the Boston Globe crew. We have a uh, maybe perhaps a video cameraman on the far sidelines, about the 20-yard line. And then down here, uh, we have what appears to be a... Uh, staff photographer so it looks as though they are in the building 21 and a half minutes remaining second half Ari Sylvia controls for the lady boxers Lara Andrade oh, here's a dangerous play for the boxers good speed by Cassie White with Tiana Brooks on her back and good job to get there to get back on defense was Brooks sprinting back to catch up to Cassie White and now is Zandra Andrade. I just heard her coach yell out Izzy, so that's what we're gonna go with for the rest of the game. And good boot there from Tori Violi, using the leg that she was hopping up and down on after that previous slide a few minutes ago. So it appears as though she's okay. Heard a nice, nice smack there. And Del Pico has drawn blood a couple of times this season. And uh, not sure if she did there once again. That was that was a, a noise that you could that you could hear all the way up here. And boy, she is an aggressive player and sometimes takes a pretty serious beating for it. As Izzy Andrade and Cassie White work for the Whalers, unable to keep it in bounds. Del Pico still pawing at her face here and there. It doesn't appear as though blood is trickling. Just now, as Izzy Andrade for the Whalers plays it back. Assistant coach Kevin Calvao. Unsure of any relation to Peyton Calvao. I wouldn't be surprised if there was one. The assistant coach yelling out instructions to the Lady Whalers. Del Pico got bonked in the nose just before. Playing the ball back, and she's still pawing at her face, checking to see if blood is trickling down. Doesn't appear so from up here, and she is wearing a mouth guard. <laughs> Very important, even in soccer. You don't think a mouth guard is one of those things that you really need, but you take a you take a ball to the face or a head-to-head -head collision like Del Pico just did, and you're going to be thankful you had a mouth guard in. Andrade inbounding for Brockton. Del Pico and Sylvia there defensively. Ball trickles off Del Pico. And Kelly signals Whaler's throwing. And really just a awkward play there for Jacinda McCartney. Threw the ball in and deflected back to her. She looked very unsure of what to do with it and sort of just kicked it out of bounds. And Brockton's back with it. Back to Buckley. Cassie White there. Putting the pressure on for the Lady Whalers. Montron controls on the far side. Good stop and go. Megan Anderson cut to the ball nicely and then let the ball roll through her legs. Not sure that was the best decision. But in any case, the Brockton continuing to forecheck here to use a hockey term, keeping the pressure on as the Lady Whalers try to get the ball safely out of their zone, unable to do so, and Andrade will throw it in for the Boxers. Montron, nice little move to split two defenders to Del Pico, strong on the ball. Montron looks for a cross. Actually, takes a low shot that looked like it might handcuff Amy Reese for a minute, but Reese is able to corral it and get it out of there. You can see by the temperature change, it appears that there might be a little steam coming off the field on the near side, so perhaps the field is starting to dry off a little bit. Haven't seen too much effect of the early rain. But again, that remains to be seen. A good speed by Del Pico here. She's able to blow past Jacinda McCartney. And the ball stays in bounds. Took a double hit. And Del Pico, smart play. Looked to the middle of the field where she had Caruso waiting. Ball was just a bit over her head. And Caruso unable to get a 
to get the noggin on it and put it in the back of the goal. But Caruso back on the ball as it was stolen off the throw-in by Brockton. And can corralled by Amy Reese. Good pressure here for Brockton as the Lady Whalers for the last three minutes or so were pushing very adamantly towards the goal and Brockton responding very nicely. If you're Coach Edmir De Silva, you have to be extremely pleased with the effort the past few minutes. Megan Anderson causing problems there defensively. 17 minutes remaining in the first half. one nothing boxers on Jen Caruso's right leg. Megan Anderson. Mrs. Anderson. Little, uh, little matrix line there. Ari Sylvia in the middle. And she's being pushed around by Alicia DeMello. And Amy Reese, keeper, watch the, watches the ball blow by her. Up one nothing. You haven't seen the Lady Boxers take a step defensively yet. They have continued to stay in an aggressive formation, continuing to push the tempo, looking for through balls and other sorts of offensive uh, plays that De Silva has drawn up and doing a good job of executing thus far. Really a couple good chances. One of them found the back of the net. As New Bedford's going to turn on the far sideline, Megan Medeiros to inbound it. Looking for Cassie White, the off-mentioned forward for the Lady Whalers. Really the her and Izzy Andrade Really the only two offensive studs, it appears, for the Lady Whalers doing much of the heavy lifting on the offensive side. 15 and a half remaining in the first half. Still one nothing. As head trainer Jerry Connors is over having a little bit of a conversation with number 16, Alana Gracia, Gracia, who has come to the near sidelines now. Doesn't look as though she wants to communicate with the trainer very much. And, uh, you know, given the climate surrounding concussions and really just any injury in high school sports now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if more players continued to sort of try and avoid the trainer's watchful eye, as usually the trainers will err on the side of caution and remove the player from the rest of the game. Obviously, that's not something that Alana Gracia wants, given that this will be her last Big Three game of the year. She's a junior, so she'll have one more year in Big Three play. Certainly not her last, but and now Jerry Connors is going to sort of give up the fight. It appears as though Gracia is going to be all right. Inbounded, Alexis Ferreira plays on the far sidelines. Beautiful ball down the near side, Cassie White. Running with Tiana Brooks and gets a good shot on net. You can see the slipperiness of the field on that one as that low shot from Cassie White really skipped across. And uh, Tori Viola looked a little bit shook up after that play. And she's shaking her right hand. Don't know if she jammed her wrist or a finger, but she looks like she's in some pain down there. We've seen her take some big hits and you know slip in warm-ups like she did this evening and really really just uh, you know continue to soldier on as Laborio Alfama assistant coach is now coming down the near sidelines to make sure that she's all right of course she's not going to come out of this game even though she's a freshman she wants every minute she can have back there in goal and she's done a wonderful job for the lady boxers this season stepping up as a freshman not an easy thing to do and certainly not an easy thing to do as a goalkeeper and uh, ball goes past Del Pico to the near side. We got some subs coming in. Nadine Vaz, number 13, is in. Megan Anderson will take a seat for the moment. Sinead Silva is going to take her spot at the forward, left forward position alongside Jen Caruso. And good defensive play there for Alicia DeMello. The Whalers, she's able to kick it up. Liz Buckley, good play in the middle of the field on defense for the boxers. Cassie White was bearing down once again. And Tori Viola still shaking that right hand. Definitely, definitely did tweak something, we'll say, on that, uh, on that rocket by New Bedford's Cassie White. And 
Ball's booted around midfield here. Montron and others. Sylvia comes away with it. Montron now streaking up the field, but covered there effectively. Alana Gracia, she was... Yep, Alana Gracia. There. Nice little run up the far sidelines for Raujo. Check that, Megan Medeiros up the far sidelines, now battling with Tiana Brooks <coughs> was Cassie White. And there is going to be a free kick here for the boxers. And trying to sneak a moment there with uh, with keeper Torviola was Laborio Alfama. Referee Mike Calley having none of that as a timeout wasn't called. Under the 12 minute mark here, remaining in the first half. And boy, good good boot up the field there by Lara Andrade, really showing her her strength. And Montron turns around trying to find a air through ball to Jen Caruso or perhaps someone else, and it was not to be. Amy Reese with a display of her tremendous leg as she kicks that ball over to the opposite 45 yard line. That was really quite a boot. Right around 60 yards, we'll say. She just kicked that ball. That was incredibly impressive. And controlling there, Cassie White. Center forward for the Whalers. Really center midfielder, but has very good speed and likes to jump up into the offensive rush quite a bit. As the crowd here, sparse crowd at Marciano Stadium, getting a little more agitated with some of the calls, or lack of calls, rather, from referees Mike Kelly and Randy Ellis. Fans letting them hear it. Everybody thinks they're a coach when, uh, when they're in the stands. It's not as easy when you're actually down on the sidelines. Jillian Amorim about to sub back in, played that ball on the near sidelines. And uh, finally, Edmir De Silva is going to get his time out here, and Laborio Alfama is going to go over and check in with Tori Viola still shaking that right hand. Not sure exactly what happened. Uh, just remembering my days of playing soccer and getting in goal once or twice in practice. Not something that I enjoyed very much at all, but. You know, when that ball is kicked at you with speed, and especially when it's low, when it takes a low hop and your hand is maybe not in the right position, you know, to shield yourself from that blow, you can really do some damage, whether it's jamming a finger or sort of jamming your wrist or hyperextending something. And she's, she's trying to stretch that hand out. Looks like it may be a finger issue. They haven't had to reset a broken digit yet, so I, I don't know how serious it is. But head trainer Jerry Connors is going to give her some attention here on the near sidelines as we look over to the New Bedford side. And Coach Nick Adams getting pretty animated down here, trying really imploring his team uh, to try and get back in this game as 20 minutes have elapsed in this first half. Boxers lead 1-0 here at Armand Colombo Field inside Rocky Marciano Stadium. My man Patrick on the camera doing a wonderful job as always. This guy's a professional. I'm just a rookie in here trying to do my thing. But enjoying myself very much. And temperature just continues to drop. Not, uh, I wouldn't call it frigid yet, but I'm sure the cold weather is right around the corner given how nice it's been all summer and, and really into the month of October. It's been gorgeous. And today was yet again another example of Mother Nature's generosity and kindness, although I'm sure her wrath is going to be following very close behind. I'm being told it's going to be a very snowy, cold, icy, sleety, you name it. It's going to be a brutal winter out here. So Patrick's already ready. He's bundled up. I'm going to have to get a nice jacket. I'm going to have to find a parka or something on sale because – it's going to be cold. We're going to get action back underway here as Andrade's going to start it back up. It appears that Tori Viola's okay. Maybe she just got a quick wrist wrap from Jerry Connors, usually stabilizing the injured joint does much good for it. So we hope that Viola will be okay. Doesn't appear as though a backup keeper is warming just yet. So no reason to be concerned if you're a Lady Boxers fan. 
But you can imagine seeing that as a New Bedford player that you would want to try and pepper Viola as much as possible. You know, we, no one wishes injury upon another player, especially on the opposing team. But you know, this is this is a sport where you know advantages will be taken when there are some to be had, and so that will be something to look for for the Lady Whalers. Will they continue to try and pepper keeper Tori Viola? And for the Brockton Boxers, that means defense has got to step up. Liz Buckley has been an all-star a year, but Tiana Brooks has got to get up in there too, as well as Ariana Almeida and even Nadine Vass, who has checked in. Izzy Andrade for the Whalers got it in. Almeida kicks it back out of bounds. Inbounding for the Whalers is Jacinda McCartney. Luckily plays it there. Is the Andre probably trying to play the ball to the middle of the field there to Cassie White. And we felt the breeze up here in the booth. That was a swing and a miss. Andre gets another chance at it. Jacinda McCartney there as well. Tiana Brooks. Looked as though she kept it in, but Mike Kelly was right on top of the play, so we have to imagine that he was correct in that. Checking back into the game is Megan Medeiros for New Bedford. And she will replace, I believe that's number 18, Ariana Bedoya. Bedoya will take a seat. She's been working hard in the game thus far. Throw in on the near sidelines here. Bedford, find Cassie White, takes a touch. Boy, not sure, uh, well, because it was going to be a corner anyways. I was gonna say, not quite sure why Izzy Andre didn't play that ball there. Now we know, because it was going to be a corner, Cassie White sets the ball down. She'll, Again, play it short. That seems to be the name of the game. Good touch into the middle of the field, though, by Alicia DeMello. Thought Cassie White was going to continue cutting towards the goal on the near side of the field. And that that was not to be. So here, Nick Adams and assistant coach Kevin Calvau cheering on their team. Calling out instructions, trying to get their girls in the right place here. Good throw in, Tiana Brooks, White controls. And boy, balls being rocketed off each other out here. Elizabeth Buckley kicking one right off of Cassie White. As under the seven minute mark now, remaining in the first half, still one nothing boxers on Caruso's lone tally. Nadia Cardoso into the game for the boxers. Del Pico up with the ball. And weak turn there by the Whalers, and Del Pico still on it. But good job tripping her up was Jacinda McCartney, or else Del Pico would have been off to the races down the near sidelines. Jacinda McCartney inbounds, as is Eandre. Nadia Cordosa with the throw in. Six and a half remain in the first half. All inbounded near side. Hustling towards it, Cassie White unable to get there. And headed out of bounds by Zion Drop. Good, smart play there. Interesting uh, play from the ball girl on the near side, but effective nonetheless. Brockton really needs this game, especially after tying Durfee 2-2. Two two. That was a large tie for the team. If they could have won that game, they would have been 2-0-1, oh and really this would have been a sort of meaningless game to play in terms of big three standings. Nonetheless, they end up tying that game, records being what they are. This is a very important matchup for both teams. Brockton happily on the board at 1-0. New Bedford struggling offensively to this point, but still continuing to push in hopes of evening the score and getting one step closer to that elusive Big Three championship. The third team in this equation is Durfee, and unfortunately because of their record, and especially in the Big Three, lacking really a keynote Big Three win, they will with all doubt, without a doubt, be eliminated from contention in the Big Three championship. That being said, Brockton and Bedford 
records being as they are, and especially in the big three. Both teams' record very similar. Brockton having just that that extra tie against Durfee that I just mentioned. Uh, if they win this, they will likely win the big three. No, they will win the big three outright. As I said before, New Bedford will still have a little work to do should they be able to come back from this one nothing deficit and win this game. Liz Buckley booting it up the field. Caruso, boy, that ball had some serious spin on it as it looked like it was going to skirt down the near sideline as soon as it made contact with the ground. Took a sharp left-hand turn going out of bounds, much to the dismay of Caruso, who saw wide open field in, in between her and goalkeeper Amy Reese for the Lady Whalers at the four-minute mark, remaining in the first half. Good game so far. Brockton up 1-0 on Jen Caruso's 22nd goal of the season, her 29th point overall and continuing to soar well above 100 points for her career as we talked about before the boston globe is in the house taking some pictures of her maybe a little video hopefully they're going to write a nice story about brockton's wonder woman amy reese another big boot down the field so much so cassie rice on cassie white excuse me unable to control it is the andrade unable to get a foot on it for the lady whalers Sylvia in the middle has Caruso. Defender falls down around her. Fancy footwork, but good job to step up Megan Medeiros from the inside and take that opportunity away from Caruso. Cardoso and White battle down the near side. Cassie White kicks it out of bounds. Much to the dismay of the New Bedford coaching staff as Nick Adams simply throws his hands up Walks away in disgust, really not happy with that call. Very bang, bang deflection play along the near sidelines. Mike Kelly did the best he could to call it like he saw it, but no one, no one's gonna be happy or someone's not going to be happy in the end of that scenario. And obviously the Lady Whalers coaching staff was not. Ariana Almeida plays it back down the field. And super dangerous play there, ball skipping towards the crease and saving the friggin' day. Getting a hug from her teammate was Megan Medeiros came back. Really inadvertent play there from Amy Reese. Kicked the ball and it deflects off a defender and starts skittering back towards the crease. Good thing Megan Medeiros was on her horses because she was able to get back there and boot it out before it went in. Not sure they would have credited that goal to had it gone in, but nonetheless, the score remains 1-0. Brockton Still in the attacking zone, Ariana Almeida with a lob. That gets down to Amy Reese, no real trouble there for her. And playing that ball was Mackenzie O'Reilly, really attempting to play that ball. Tough break there, so it deflects out of bounds and we're into the two minute mark. Probably about a minute remaining or so in this first half. And coaching staff for New Bedford really yelling their instructions forcefully at this point as they can sense perhaps that Brockton is continuing to push and their girls may be losing an edge. Rolling down, Mike Kelly checking his watch. Probably another 30 to 45 seconds left in this one. Del Pico near side. Ariana Almeida. Getting it up, New Bedford stepping in the way. Cruz has got it in the middle of the field. Sees the speed that she has, able to make a stop and go move. Continuing to push on. Calling for it again from Del Pico as Mackenzie O'Reilly got double teamed in the middle of the field there. Had the ball taken away, Sylvia on it. Del Pico with a good run down the near sideline. She has Caruso in the middle. And credit the defense there of Jacinda McCartney able to get the ball away from Maria Del Pico. That could have been very, very dangerous again for the Lady Whalers. As Jen Caruso was there, Cassie White down the near sidelines. Tiana Brooks taps it out of bounds there. Get one more rush here for the Lady Whalers as we are probably right around the end of the first half. White inbounds it. There's Megan Medeiros. Is Yandra there as well, looking for Cassie White. And the ball goes out of bounds. Still some time left here in the first half. And 
Mike Kelly oh, faked us all out. Looked like he was reaching for the whistle there. And he, in fact, is not. Del Pico on the near sidelines, wasting time. And getting a little chippy down there on the near side is Del Pico and Andre. And Mike Kelly boring the Brockton coaches as to what sort of call they were looking for there. They're really running out of time. Mike Kelly's got the whistle in his mouth. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the first half. Jen Caruso's long goal makes it one nothing boxers. End of the first half here at Armand Colombo Field inside Rocky Marciano Stadium. I am Eamon Convey, and we will be right back for second half action of this big three game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for second half action of the Brockton Lady Boxers against the New Bedford Whalers in this final big three matchup of the season where Brockton is up 1-0 on the beautiful right-footed boot of Jen Caruso and looking poised coming into the second half to take the big three championship. As just waiting on the referee's word, Mike Kelly gives him the whistle and we're we are back here playing girls soccer as the Whalers coming out with a bit more intensity here on the now steam covered Armin Colombo field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Not sure whether or not this field is heated, but it sure appears so as we've got a good amount of steam rising off far sidelines. Andrade and Cassie White battling it out. New Bedford in the away reds and your Brockton High boxers in the home whites. Free kick granted here for the Lady Whalers. And up to take it is Ariana Bedoya. High arcing kick towards Tori Viola. Oh man, really dangerous play there. Izzy Andrade able to get a foot on it. Tori Viola at close range. Took that off the legs, it appeared, and she just appears to be okay as Caruso takes a fall on the far side of the field. That looked a little awkward. She pops right up and appears to be okay. Back to Tori Viola. Beautiful save there, really aggressive play by the freshman keeper, as we've seen her do many times this season, throwing her body around in hopes of saving the ball for the boxers, and she does just that, especially given an injured right hand and perhaps an injured left leg that we saw earlier in pregame. But she's all right as Montron's now got it up the field. Megan Anderson up with her. Good defensive effort there for New Bedford was Taylor Swords in the middle of the field. Now we've got another free kick awarded to New Bedford. And really just a, uh, just a factor here is the intensity with which the Lady Whalers have come out of this first half. Brockton a little bit on their heels. Obviously the Whalers pressing if they were to somehow be able to come back and win this game, it would be a huge boost to them, potentially give them the Big Three Championship. If Brockton wins this game, they are guaranteed the Big Three Championship. So obviously a huge second half coming up here at Rocky Marciano Stadium as Del Pico controls, has Caruso. Del Pico back on the outside. And Caruso, probably if she was able to give that ball up, would have found Del Pico wide open on the far sidelines and would have gotten the ball back from Del Pico. Cassie White kicking the ball up. Tori Viola able to corral it, showing no ill signs on that right hand as she bounces the ball, readying the goal kick. Pretty strong kick there, but off of Alicia DeMello, Ari Sylvia controls. The free kick for the boxers. Third free kick in as many minutes here in the second half. Obviously the aggression on both teams has risen significantly. Perhaps the weight of the moment being felt by both squads as both coaches really rallying their teams in the second half and calling for more of an offensive effort here. Brockton to stretch this lead even a little farther, perhaps get an insurance goal or two. And New Bedford really just to get on the board and to capitalize on the few chances that they have had thus far. 
Far sidelines controlling, Cassie White. Really the main thorn in the, thorn in the side of the Lady Boxer defense as she's been running around the field. This evening with great poise, though not able to get a goal in thus far. Sylvia looking for Anderson farther up the field. Good job by Del Pico to step up. White there defensively. Plays it back to Tiana Brooks. And good job to step up Jacinda McCartney, another defensive stalwart for the Lady Whalers. Able to step in on the far sidelines to get that up. Is the Andre unable to get by the strong defense of Tiana Brooks and the ball goes back down on keeper Amy Reese. She corrals it under the 36 minute mark. 35-45 remaining in the second half of this last big three game of the season. Anderson giving chase to the near sidelines. There defensively was Jillian Amorim. Anderson unable to get it. Amorim throws in, good step in there by Ari Sylvia, able to steal it, gets it over to Anderson. who will place it back to Montron. Good ball work, looking for Caruso up the middle of the field. And Taylor Soros there defensively again. Clearly she's been tasked with stopping Caruso up the middle of the field. And she's done a good job of it thus far. Jen Caruso gives her a, a pat on the back, a little bit of friendly sportsmanship there from the two competitors. Del Pico on the far sidelines. Playing it to no one in particular. Assistant coach Ken Calvao imploring his ladies to continue to push the ball up the field. Buckley stepping up with a strong right leg, gets it up to Caruso. And good job to step around her, playing that pretty poorly was Jacinda McCartney. Caruso finds Montron. There's the wet field for you. Skips over to Sylvia. She's got a lane now. Thought Anderson was going to keep running, but Anderson had to check back on sides. The ball rose to keep her Amy Reese and out of, out of harm's way for the Lady Whalers. Booted up the field. Amy Reese has an incredible leg. That will clearly be something that Tori Villa will have to work on in the offseason is the strength of her goal kick. Uh, hers travels roughly about 40 to 45 yards, whereas Amy Reese is displaying a leg that can carry anywhere from about 45 to 60 yards. And we've seen her uh, reach that 60-yard mark quite a few times here this evening. And clearly that's something that Viola will want to have in her arsenal for next season as, season as she returns for her sophomore campaign for the Lady Boxers. A lot of stretching going on down here for the New Bedford Whalers. Hopefully going to get some fresh legs in here and try and take advantage of a uh, very much shortened bench. Uh, really just uh, attrition by injury for the Lady Boxers, and they have lost a number of players this season, uh, including one of their star defenders, senior Yasmina Teixeira, who is out for this game. Took a pretty hard hit a few weeks ago and has yet to return to action for her team. Boxers have made do defensively uh, with the likes of Ariana Almeida and Elizabeth Buckley and Tiana Brooks and now Nadine Vaz who has played some crucial minutes. The just mentioned Vaz gets her foot on the ball but unable to do really anything with it. Good turn here for Ariana Bedoya, but taken away by Tiana Brooks. Anderson giving chase down the near side of the field, but that's going to be just out of her reach. Keeper Amy Reese comes out to the edge of her box on the near side, makes the play, and lets off another nice-looking goal kick. Searching for Izzy Andrade up the field. Cassie White was there as well. But Tiana Brooks, as she has done many times this evening, able to corral the ball away from the offense and get it out of bounds. Good step up there on the far side. Lara Andrade, host of subs, coming up here. Megan Medeiros and Jacinda McCartney, it appears. Oh, excuse me. That is... Well, we'll find out how that is. Perhaps... Alexa Pacheco, and good job to step up there, Ariana Almeida. She is one of the biggest defenders for the boxers, uses her size very effectively, and uh, is able to step into the ball there and really get it out of harm's way. Tori Viola, good goal, good goal kick there. As, of course, as soon as I mentioned something, the announcer's curse comes into play, and, and she's able to let off a roaring goal kick there that skips over past 
Boxers logo, throw in far side, Del Pico gets it in, Montrand battling over there with Alexis Ferreira. Montrand and looking for Caruso, but Ferreira there, now Caruso controls, good move to the inside, has some room, looking for a shot, couple of deflections, Jacinda McCartney there defensively, Caruso's gonna have a corner kick. This will be the second or third corner that Caruso has taken this evening. And she's looked very good on them thus far, getting good power and trajectory on the ball. As it looks like Del Pico and Ariana Almeida are gonna make a run here, almost an own goal there for the Lady Whalers as they deflect it towards their own crease. Really dangerous play, but out of harm's way. And that's gonna end up being in a free kick. And it is Alexia Pacheco as subs continue to wait for the Lady Whalers on the near sidelines, about half field. Good touch pass from Del Pico. Lara Andrade up there. Ball deflects to the middle for Caruso. Stops, surveys her surroundings. Three defenders close in, finds Montrand. Montrand over to Sylvia. Sylvia, good stop and go move. Nadine Vaz, good step up there by Alyssa Rujo. And Almeida boots it down the field and wisely letting it roll out of bounds is Amy Reese. Substitutions now signaled in by Randy Ellis on the near side. As mentioned before, Megan Medeiros and Alexia Pacheco coming in for Ariana Bedoya. And Alyssa Arujo. Check out of the game. Paul deflected up the far sidelines. Cassie White giving chase. Mike Kelly signals for a boxer's throw in. Where it went out. Montrand. Nice turn in the middle of the field, playing the throw in from Andrade. Jen Caruso, patented turnaround move, looking for space, drawing defenders as she always does. Anderson, near side, able to get the ball past Megan Medeiros. And it will be a goal kick. Good hustle down there for Anderson, unable to make anything come of it. And give the Whalers credit, Anderson and Caruso, two of the faster players perhaps that they have seen this season and really handling them quite well, with the exception of Caruso's early goal that came around the three minute mark in the first half. The score remains the same as we're under 29 minutes, just about 28 and a half remaining here in the second period. Good stop and go by Ari Sylvia, finds Caruso in the middle of the field with a beautiful back heel, takes a step, and she's not gonna get there. Good job by Kath, Amy Reese. Really a beautifully aggressive play there on Caruso, who likes to take a step in the box, really take a touch, and then use her speed to catch back up to the ball. And Amy Reese read that from the beginning. Now the other way. Cassie White gonna get it in bounds here for New Bedford. Del Pico steps up, clears the ball up the field. Brockton packing the ball in a little, packing the zone in a little bit more defensively. Good steal by Del Pico. Numbers for Brockton if they hurry. Megan Anderson on side, drops it to Jen Caruso. Has Montron and Sylvia up the middle of the field, chooses Sylvia. Good play to Montron up the middle and had Megan Anderson looking for her. She may have been off sides on the near side. Montron taking a nice touch there. That's gonna be a throw in on the far side. In dangerous position for the New Bedford Whalers as they look to keep the game at a one nothing deficit and with any luck, tie this one up. A tie in this game would be devastating as the effect of it in terms of the big three championship is nothing. Good turn here, Elizabeth Buckley able to catch back up to the play as dangerously on the ball was Alexia Pacheco. The newly checked in sub making her presence felt already has good aggressive play here on the near side. Anderson looking for the ball. Over to Cassie White, good stop and go. Del Pico, good job, read that play effectively. And she'll be rewarded for her hustle with a Brockton free kick. Read that ball beautifully. Maria Del Pico had her back turned, knew 
that the ball was going to continue out to the far sidelines. Turned around, shot back out, and was able to step back in front of Alexia Pacheco and stop that play from happening. Montron plays the ball off her head. Looking for a handball call. It was not to be. Randy Ellis was right on top of it. Let that one go. Alexia Pacheco down here. Tiana Brooks on her defensively. Good hustle by Brooks. Get it back down the field. And getting it out of bounds, Megan Medeiros. Now it's going to be a throw in on the near side. And perhaps calling for an illegal throw in, I believe, is Randy Ellis on the near side. Nick Adams, head coach. Very unhappy. Now talking to Izzy Andrade, perhaps trying to get something going between her and Alexi Pacheco, who are playing at the forward position for New Bedford. And, uh, and really just the, the Whalers not spacing themselves out very well. And that's a blatant push there by Alicia DeMello. Narita Montron playing aggressive defense there at her midfielder position. And uh, really just a, a, a pretty blatant shove there by Alicia DeMello results in a free kick. Montron's gonna take it, wearing the headgear as the temperature has dropped a little bit. Even I now have my jacket on, joining Patrick in the uh, in the getting warm movement. That ball skitters across the crease to Amy Reese. She is able to control it and get it back out. Montron plays it with a head about half field. Continuing to push, really stalking in behind that zone is Alexia Pacheco, but the Lady Whalers unable to find her. For a, for a true offensive chance thus far. I'm sure they'll continue to look up the field in her direction. And the boxers would be wise to continue to mark her as Tiana Brooks and Elizabeth Buckley sort of forming a two-woman wall on either side of her. Ball gets caught up in between Anderson's legs. Unable to really control it, getting it out of bounds as Taylor soars. Excuse me, Jillian Amorum. Getting the ball out of bounds. Is the Andrade on the ball for New Bedford? Good step up by Ariana Almeida. Nadine Vaz. Good shield off by Almeida. Sylvia on the ball, senior captain. Chips it up. Boy, I thought that was going to get down the near side to Megan Anderson, but good job again by Jillian Amorim to step up. And she might have taken that off more of the face area rather than the head where you usually play that ball as she's now sort of pawing at her face, making sure there's no blood coming out. Far sidelines, Cassie White. White with a little give and go. Del Pico looked as though she kind of reached out for that one, definitely got it with the arm. Perhaps it was the chest area from this angle. But nonetheless, no call from Mike Kelly was on top of it. Sylvia, good steal. Drops to Caruso. Caruso looking, finds Montron. Caruso going back up the middle of the field. And tough play there. Narita Montron really led her into the waiting defense of New Bedford rather than leading her away from it. Good hustle on the near side by Andre. Unable to get it. Nadine Vaz will get it in for Brockton. Vaz headed off by Andre. Almeida now plays it up, booted back out of bounds by Jillian Amorim. Gonna be a throw in here for New Bedford as we're gonna have another sub as waiting on the sidelines is Peyton Calvao, the freshman midfielder for New Bedford. Good athleticism there by referee Randy Ellis to get out of the way as that ball was played down the near sidelines looking for Alexia Pacheco. Usually you see the refs get in the way of more plays than they have this evening, but that was a really good job to try and allow New Bedford to have their offensive chance, as was rightly deserved. Good job by Randy Ellis to get out of the way. And Tiana Brooks lobbying very strongly for a call. Now she walks away from the ref. Probably a good move as Ariana Almeida and her have a, have a good laugh about it. Tiana Brooks, a very feisty and fiery player for the Lady Boxers, showing it there. 22 minutes and counting remain here in the second half. A lot of the play down the near sidelines. New Bedford sensing that they have some momentum here as their coaches really lobbying them to continue pushing the attack. 
And Brockton turns the other way. Caruso with some good speed. Goes to the middle of the field, gets off a shot. Good job by Amy Reese. That was a completely blind shot. Not sure she was able to track where the ball was coming from, but good job to get on top of it nonetheless. The middle of the field, Pacheco. Good ball up the far sidelines as just having checked into the game was Peyton Calvao. And in the mist, unable to get to it, but safely, Lara Andrade boots it out of bounds. And it will be a throw in on the far sidelines right about the 25 yard line on the football markings here at Armin Colombo Field inside Rocky Marciano Stadium where the weather is chilled off just a bit. You can see some steam rising from the field. Pretty eerie effect as we're closing in on Halloween. Very fitting. And uh, we have about 20 and a half minutes remaining here in the second half. one nothing. Brockton High on the foot of Jen Caruso. Decidedly some more offensive chances here for New Bedford in the second half as they continue to push down the far sidelines. But give Brockton credit. Good job packing in the defensive zone, not allowing really any open shots or open runs, anything that could be considered a, a dangerous chance on Torrey Viola. And the fans imploring Brockton to work the ball out of their zone as they have been unable to do in about the last minute or two here. Lady Whalers doing a good job controlling the tempo inside Brockton's defensive zone. Cassie White and others on the far sidelines. Del Pico able to fight off Peyton Calvao, who just checked into the game for New Bedford. Tiana Brooks, strong kick, getting that ball back out around the on the 40-yard line. I thought that ball would have gone out of bounds a little bit sooner than that, but Mike Kelly was watching it all the way, so we trust his judgment. Del Pico steals and turns. Gets the ball back up the field. Caruso closing in. And smart play there for the New Bedford defense as they were just able to get it out of bounds before Caruso was able to make a more serious chance out of it. 20 minutes remain in the second half in the last big three championship in the last big three game of the season for both teams. As has been previously stated, Brockton will win the big three championship with a win here this evening. New Bedford will likely win the big three championship with a victory here this evening and a tie would do no good for either team. Uh, it could be said that Brockton would have a better chance just based on their Dif record differential in comparison with the Lady Whalers, but nonetheless, a win would give the big three title outright to the boxers, something they have desperately wanted this entire season, something they've worked very hard for. And we will, both these teams will be in the playoffs undoubtedly this year, both playing very well. Brockton, one of the top teams in the state and really just a, a pretty consistent year. A couple of, couple of big losses, a couple of very, very big wins, and a few undoubtedly frustrating ties for the Lady Boxers, as of course they would have loved to have won those games and make this, make this contest a bit, a bit less uh, important in terms of, of winning the championship. Brockton so far showing a very, very strong effort in this game, both offensively and defensively. Blatant penalty there on Ariana Almeida as she just shoved Cassie White to the ground. Perhaps a little frustration. We saw something out of Tiana Brooks earlier. Now Ariana Almeida getting into the physical game. And, you know, a couple of those per game, as long as you're not getting carded, not a bad thing. You want to, especially on your home turf, you want to show the other team who's boss and really be physical with them. Getting a break inside is Pacheco. Dangerous play there as she got in, in behind Tiana Brooks and Elizabeth Buckley. But Tori Viola, as has been the case most of this season, with a smart and aggressive play out of her crease and able to absolve the danger for Brockton. Ariana Almeida going in there aggressively. And that will be a call as Alexis Ferreira was the infracting party there 
for New Bedford. Narita Matron up on the offense by her lonesome. And Caruso coming to the near sidelines, having a very spirited discussion with Admir De Silva. We can only imagine uh, what that was concerning. She has appeared a bit frustrated, though, getting a goal this evening, really appearing pretty frustrated at her inability to get the ball in certain spots and, and maintain more of an advantage in this game. As we're at the 16-minute mark remaining in the second half, one nothing on Caruso's goal. She's on the near sidelines here. Montron works the far sidelines. Turns. Getting double teamed defensively. Good spin move there for Montron. The ball squirted away from her, but boy, that was, an, uh, that was something you would see in FIFA right there. A little spin move down the near sidelines to avoid the defense of Jacinda McCartney. And just a uh, a wonderful display of footwork on the far sides by Montron, unable to make anything else of it. And now you see Brockton stepping up more aggressively from the defensive and midfielding position. Montron intercepting the ball. Ari Sylvia in the middle of the field, definitely looking for Jen Caruso there and off, off of her weak foot. Caruso controls on the near sidelines. Good stop and go move. ball will be now headed out on the near sidelines as Jen Caruso going after this ball very aggressively now halfway gone in the second half looking for an insurance goal late in this game that would seal the big three championship for the Brockton Boxers inbounding it on the near side Amanda Almeida with a good throw in there Mackenzie O'Reilly aggressively stepping towards the ball Del Pico Gets a foot on it. Now Montron. Del Pico turns, has Sylvia in the middle of the field. The captain of the offense, along with Jen Caruso turning, has Andre up the far sidelines. A bit too aggressive of a touch, unable to control it. And the ball will go back to New Bedford. As the mist starting to roll in here, hot and heavy. Marciano Stadium. Almost almost a fog, a thin layer of fog rolling in over the stadium as if we weren't hard pressed enough to see the numbers on the field. Here's just another another element, another factor coming into the fold. Tiana Brooks on the near sidelines, finds Sylvia. O'Reilly turns, has Caruso. Nice back heel back to Sylvia. Looking for Montron. That ball got up over her, but Amy Reese, as she has showed all night. Very capable of sniffing plays out before they get too dangerous. Stepped up there and made a nice play. Cassie White with a beautiful header. Tiana Brooks stepped up for Brockton, unable to keep it in bounds. As Pacheco, who has proven herself to be a dangerous forward this half, not sure where she was the first half, down there with Brooks on the near sidelines again. Brooks gets it out of bounds. Lady Whalers working their way down here. Cassie White going to throw it in. Finds Pacheco, who clearly pushed off on Tiana Brooks. And that, that looked like another another push, too. Ken Calvao for New Bedford and saying that Ari Sylvia took a dive there. I don't know about that one. Looked like Megan Medeiros did give her a pretty good shove, nonetheless. New Bedford back on the ball. Cassie White near side. Alicia DeMello and others there. Cassie White with a throw in down the near sidelines. New Bedford really getting more girls up into the box now, trying to even the score in this game as we are rolling down towards the 10 minute mark. 12.25 remaining in the second half. One nothing boxers, Mackenzie O'Reilly touched to the near side and taken away there by Jillian Moore. Ball down the near sidelines, taking a right hand turn. Caruso's on it. There defensively is Ariana Gracia. Caruso's got an open lane and puts it in. Beautiful five-hole goal on the keeper, Amy Reese. Did everything she could to cut down the angle. Was there on the near side. Caruso made her hesitate and nutmegged her. If we're talking about another hockey term, able to get it through the five-hole right between the legs of keeper Amy Reese for her second goal of the game. 23rd on the season, good for an even 30 points 
for Jen Caruso on the season and continuing to push towards a total of about 150 on her career, I'm told, if you count the way colleges do of goals as two points and assists as one. If you don't look at it that way, she is still over 100 points, an extremely impressive total for the senior who committed to Brown last year. So not only can she do it on the field, but she can do it in the classroom as well. And she'll be showcasing that talent down in Providence, Rhode Island next year for Brown. Caruso and, and De Silva imploring the referee there, Randy Ellis, pretty sure he missed that call, but nonetheless, New Bedford's gonna have it and they sky it down the end. Jen Caruso's second goal here in the 29th minute of the second half makes it a two nothing game. Though the scoreboard has not been updated yet. I assure you it is two nothing. And Pacheco is going to be called for, oh, actually, no, that's going to be a hand on Brockton. So the Lady Whaler is going to go the other way. Cassie White with the ball about the 40-yard line on the football markings at Armin Colombo Field. And uh, Jen Caruso getting fiery out there, obviously very unhappy with that call. And New Bedford gets it down there. Ari Sylvia able to turn and kick it out of bounds. The <laughs> and now, now the scoreboard has been updated. We have a couple of junior scorekeepers in the stands. 2-0 as we're under the 10 minute mark here. Boxers comfortably in control of this one. The win here will seal the Big Three Championship for them. Already into the playoffs are the Lady Boxers. New Bedford continuing to push here, trying to at least get on the board in their last Big Three game of the season. Keep some momentum going as they continue on in their schedule. Nice aggressive play here. Lady Boxers stepping up one by one. Del Pico finds Caruso. Caruso, nice little move. Montron on a full sprint. She's trying to body the defender there, and she's able to ra raggle the ball away from her on the near side. And still controlling, taking her time. Good secondary defense coming in there from Jillian Amorim, as the primary defense was handled by Taylor Soares. And the double senior defender combination able to get the ball away from Montron. A little stop and play here, Sylvia tying her shoes. Good thing she did, because the ball came right into her on the throw-in. Oh, nice move there by Montron. It definitely had the ball in a string right there. Sylvia by the goal line extended, and found Del Pico by the far post, and really just didn't get a good foot on it, unable to control that deflection as it sails outside the far post, and it would not have been low enough to get in the goal as well. Fog continuing to roll in even heavier here at Marciano Stadium. Eight minutes remain in the second half. Boxers on top, two nothing. Two goals from Jen Caruso, her 22nd and 23rd of the year, giving her an even 30 points on the year with three games remaining and seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this one as well. So she's still got some more time here, I'm sure knowing Jen, she won't be happy with 30. She'll want to get more points on the season, and she'd love to add another one here for what would amount to her fifth or sixth hat trick of the season. She's scored more than three goals at least two or three times as well. So prolific offensive player here for Brockton High and continuing to show why Brown and really many other schools recruited her as young as her sophomore year. In fact, she had a bunch of Pac-12 teams coming after her. I'm told that Michigan, yes, that Michigan, was recruiting her at the end of her freshman year and really wanted her to sign as a sophomore. Uh, if, if I'm being honest with you, I think she made a good decision in not signing. You're, you're winding up at a school in Brown that will give you an Ivy League education um, will give you some very competitive women's soccer. 
Uh, Ivy League athletics are nothing to turn your nose up at, and it will set her up for a very bright future. I think she would have been able to achieve great success anywhere she went, but Brown is certainly a great place to do it. And look out for that article in the Globe about Brockton High's very own Jen Caruso. I'm told they're writing one about her. We saw the camera people here this evening. Six and a half minutes remain. New Bedford continuing to push, still in their own end here. Looking to get it out. Brockton looks to have gotten a bit of a shot in the arm from that second goal by Caruso. As they're flying around out there now, both defensively and offensively, and especially in the midfield where most of the action has taken place this evening, really playing aggressive defense and getting the ball away from New Bedford before they're able to put a chance together. I'm sure the girls out there would love to keep a clean sheet for keeper Tori Viola. She's worked so hard to keep the Lady Whalers off the board this evening, and she has done just that. 5.45 remain in the second half. Brockton up 2-0 on two beautiful goals from Jen Caruso. Beautiful patience displayed on both of them. And really, with such a talent like Caruso, not much that keeper Amy Reese could have done. She's a senior goaltender. She's seen quite a few talented players in her day, undoubtedly. I'm not sure that she has seen the presence on the soccer field that is Brockton High's Jen Caruso. And she has made that presence felt here once again as she scores the two tallies Brockton has on the board. Five minutes remaining in the second half. Brockton continuing to play staunch defense, getting the ball out of bounds, making the safe play. Safe passes sub in here, Alexis Ferreira coming in for New Bedford. Coming off the field for New Bedford is number six, Courtney Lima. Nick Adams going to get another sub up off the bench here. Perhaps some fresh legs will be able to change the outcome of this game late. Four and a half minutes remain in the second half. Crowd here in Brockton anxious. They can feel that a big three championship is on the verge of being achieved. And Nadia Cordoso and Janae Silva wait as subs on the Brockton sidelines. We'll see who they are coming in to replace. Sylvia with the ball, looking for Caruso. She's got some speed. Decent back heel turn. And substitutes are going to come in. Ariana Bedoya for the Lady Whalers. Nadia Cordoso and Janae Silva, as mentioned, for the boxers. Narita Montrand and Lara Andre taking a seat. And the studs for Brockton, Jen Caruso, Maria Del Pico, Ari Silvia, and others not coming out of this game. Staying in to finish out the last big three, at least for Sylvia and for Jen Caruso. This will be their last big three game. I'm sure it's a bittersweet moment for them, but they will be happy if this if this score holds on. It will result in a 2-0 win and a big three championship for them. They still have three games left in the season after this. They will play at Bridgewater Rainham on the 23rd. They'll play at West Bridgewater on the 24th. And they'll play home against Spellman on the 27th, which I know is a game that both teams are very well geared up for. In fact, BCA was here earlier with, with Matt and Mad Dog, Matt Nelson and Pat, as they were filming some interviews of the coach and the athletic director, Peter Caruso, and his lovely daughter, Brockton's Wonder Woman herself, Jen Caruso. Getting some lead up for that Spellman game as it's a big crosstown rivalry, big BCA sports. We'll have a nice little segment leading up to the game to get uh, to get all you Brocktonians hyped up about the potential of, uh, of beating those aforementioned crosstown rivals as we roll down two and a half minutes here, remaining in the second half. And running down towards a time when the clock will be kept officially on the field by the referees. And we are now 10 seconds away from that happening. I'll do my best to keep you guys updated with the time. And Brockton looks to just finish this one out. Mackenzie O'Reilly on the ball being played very aggressively by New Bedford's Alicia DeMella. And we're under the two minute mark here. So time will be kept on the field. And Caruso turning and running for that ball down the near sidelines, not to be. It will be collected by Alana Gracia. 
as we have roughly a minute 45 remaining in this game. Most of the 50 or so fans here standing at Marciano Stadium in anticipation of what will in all likelihood be a victory for the Lady Boxers and the ceiling of a Big Three championship. A very successful season for Brockton this far. It, at points, the record did not indicate it, but they won a bunch of big games and none bigger than this one this evening if this score will hold up. So we have about a minute left in on-field time. New Bedford gets the ball in, looking for one or perhaps two late rushes. Dangerous play there. Ariana Bedoya able to get her head out of the way as Sylvia took a high kick on that one. And the field definitely getting a little more slick. You can see the ball sliding around a bit more. Uh, not much time left in this game. It will likely not be a factor in the outcomes. We have about 40 seconds left in this one. Nadia Cordoso dangerously plays it towards the middle of the field. Lady Whalers tracking it down. There for them, Alicia DeMello plays it up to Pacheco. Pacheco back to Amorim. Caruso's got one more chance here, two defenders on her. Really nice step up there by Taylor Soros. She's done a good job on Caruso despite the two goals. And Del Pico's down about half field now, looking though, as though she may have a cramp, having a little trouble standing on that leg, stretching out her calf, it appears. Hopefully she'll be all right. Oh, and there's a late shot, but unable to get it on goal as it slides by the near post was Alexia Pacheco, the oft dangerous player for the New Bedford Whalers, though she has not been able to get on the board this evening. We are over the two minutes allotted on the on the scoreboard for the rest of the game. So we're into what they would consider stoppage time, though officially no such thing exists in high school soccer. Buckley plays it errantly. Referees doing their best to give New Bedford another chance here. Randy Ellis has to scoot out of the way of that one. And that's the final whistle. This game is over. Brockton High moves to 7-4-4 four and four in the season. 2-0-2 oh, in the big three as the ladies run down to congratulate keeper Tori Viola. Much merriment celebration down on the field. Lady boxers win 2-0 over the New Bedford Lady Whalers. This one will seal it for the big three championship. Brockton gets another win. New Bedford moves to 4-6-5 and five on the season and even 1-1-1 one, one, and one in big three play. That's just going to about do it here at Armin Colombo Field inside Rocky Marciano Stadium. Your Lady Boxers have won the Big Three Championship in impressive fashion. For everyone at BCA Sports, we thank you for watching. For Patrick and Eamon Convey, have a good night, folks.